We're here at the Goose's Out in London with Jim Cosley. Hello, Hello Jim. Man. How are you doing? Um, we last talked in the beginning of next last year, so what have you been up to since then? Wow. Um, you came to our launch gig, didn't you? We did, That's yes. right, in uh, South London somewhere. Yes. And uh, yes, I had a very busy year since then. Uh, so we toured the new album and played lots of festivals in the summer and the autumn. And then we uh, went up to, uh, when did we go? Oh no, Morgan didn't come. That's right. Uh, I went on the Christmas tour with Waters and Carthy again in December. Yeah. And we did all the, uh, the Christmas carols, things like that, which was great fun as usual. And, uh, and then here we are round again. So I had a sort of um, busy January with uh, the radio show I've been doing in Devon. Huh? And, um, and then February kicks into gigs again. Um, what's the current state of play with, with Morkin Causley? Well, uh, uh, we've, as uh, a few members have decided that they'd like to leave to do other things, and the initial plan was to replace some of those members with people who played the same instruments, or maybe a completely different instrument. And then more and more people decided they'd actually like to go and do different things, so we've uh, decided to uh, honour our gigs up until the summer and then we're going to go off into our own separate projects because we've all got some quite exciting things we'd like to get our teeth into. So is Shrewsbury going to be the last, last gig? That's together? correct, Shrewsbury, yeah. It's very sad. No, it's not sad, it's very positive. <laughs> Lots of exciting things to come. It's really good. Well, can you tell us a bit about some of those then? Um, right, um, well I can't speak too much for other people. Yeah. Although I, I can say that uh, Mr. Dave Dela has got a new solo album coming out, which yeah. is something to look forward to. And obviously James is very uh, involved with Jim Moray. What's been your favourite Morgan Causley memory so far? Oh goodness. Um, let's think. Stealing Show of Hands audience is quite handy. That was fun actually. Okay. We got to, Show of Hands kindly have taken us under their wing and uh, let us support them at several gigs. Yeah. And uh, they attract a huge crowd, and it's been so brilliant to play to their kind of audience, and uh, and also be on a CD with them, which has been really good fun. Yeah, really good. Um, so yeah, that was a really great experience. I enjoyed that. Um, what else? And also getting to go to the folk awards is always a pleasure. Yeah. With Walker Corsi. Um, so uh, sadly, we haven't won again. No. I know, we keep getting beaten by Scottish people every year. Although, although you were nominated before you had a record out. Didn't you? That's true, yeah, so... Um, There's not many people do that. That's true. Oh, we should write that on our CV. That is pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you mentioned your radio show a couple of times. Yes. How did you get involved with it? Uh, well, um, when I finished university in 2006, uh, my housemate helped me make a, a demo radio programme uh, which was something I had an idea of because I noticed that several regional BBC stations had their own uh, folk show but Radio Devon where I'm from and where I was intending to move back home to after uni didn't have one so I thought that would be a really good idea so I sent them a demo and um, didn't hear anything for about three years <laughs> and then uh, eventually um, um, my friend Jackie Oates, who also lives in Devon, she said she'd been to Radio Devon for an interview and she'd heard that they were interested in doing a folk show. So I got in touch with them and uh, they said they had never heard my demo, which I'd handed into them, but nonetheless they were quite interested in doing a folk show. So um, I did a little tester one in Easter 2009 and um, had a bit more training into the later half of 2009 and I did a sort of Christmas special and then I've started doing one every week as of January 2010. And how's it going? Are you enjoying it? It is good. It's a lot more work than I realised actually. Uh, I'm doing a, a two hour show, beat that Mike Harding, and, uh, and also I'm getting a guest in every week, somebody sort of local and um, I'm trying to sort of stretch across the board so it's either uh, you know, from the very traditional side of folk to the very contemporary singer-songwriter. So I play a, as broad a mix of folk as I can get my hands on. Um, so do you control what songs you play completely or are they chosen for you? Yeah, pretty much I control everything. The only sort of slight control is that they suggest I play a more upbeat track 
at the beginning and end of each hour in case we sort of lose any people who might tune in and go, uh, that sounds like folk, I'm not listening to that, or a fuddy-duddy. So I'm not allowed to play anything too traddy, which I have a slight, uh, ang well, you know, disagreement about. But, you know, you've got to try and please everybody, so. But do you ever feel under pressure to create, like, a programme that's going to appeal to, like, both, like, half of the folk community? Yeah, sort of, actually. I mean, if I had my way, I would just be completely more traddy because that's what I personally lean to and um, uh, I mean the program is called Jim Causley's Devon Folk but I have been reminded that it's not about Jim Causley it's about the listeners and I kind of think well yes but then if they like what I like then they might like the program but I sort of I understand the argument so I do try to play more contemporary stuff as well. Okay, obviously um, you're now in charge of the programme. How has it, have you found the transition from going from like interviewee to interviewer? Um, it's quite weird. It, well, actually, it's just really good fun because uh, a lot of the people that I get into interview are people that I'm friends with already. So we have got a good laugh, actually. And um, so it makes it quite relaxed in that way. And I haven't had many people so far that I don't know although I expect I will do in the future, but, uh, but yeah, although the main trouble is actually trying to stop myself because like I could just sit there and talk to my guests and blabber on for ages and I've got uh, the chap beside me who's sort of uh, producing and sort of going, you know, <laughs> so I do have to keep, a, keep an eye on how much I chat. So no horror stories as yet? Uh, no, not really. The, the, actually, the most fun one I had the other week was um, we had Jackie Oates, who I mentioned earlier. She came in for a little chat because she just lives up the road. And um, Jackie and I were both nominated for the same category in uh, the, <laughs> the Folk Awards this year. So we had a little laugh. We just sort of mucked about about that and said, I'm going to beat you, you, you devil. <laughs> <laughs> we might not have used that word, but anyway, yeah. Okay. Well, um Obviously, folk has been going through this big sort of like renaissance like period. Have you noticed any sort of like major changes in the way that folk as a genre is being perceived over your time as like being an actor? So? Yeah, um, especially at the moment, there seems to be two main sections of folk. There seems to be like the more traddy end, and like even though you've got young and up and coming people in that end of folk that is still kind of traddy and then you've got the new folk scene which is more singer-songwritery generally than traddy and uh, and the weird thing I've noticed about the two separate bits I think is that the, the traddy end especially the younger lot are trying to be as cool and modern looking as they can whereas the new folk lot who, who are the more generally trendy Londony end of things are actually trying to look more oldie worldy and 70s sort of in there which is quite bizarre but I'm enjoying just sort of being a part of it and watching what's going on. And um, have you um, ever have you noticed like there's been more of a shift in opinion for like the teenagers that you get involved with? Like... Um, we're definitely seeing more younger people coming to gigs actually um, it really depends on the venue that you play uh, like tonight for example it's a it's a kind of folk club but it's it's got a more younger, funky feel to this folk club, so you get a slightly more varied audience. But with the more traditional folk clubs, you still get a generally a more mature audience, uh, <laughs> with the odd young face perhaps now and then spluttered in. But, um, but yeah, especially at festivals, you get loads of young people jumping about. And then I think, well, where do all you young people hide for the rest of the year? They sort of go in hibernation for the winter.